Welcome everyone, this is almost a pseudo sort of impromptu discussion. It was semi-planned, but we had to get ready for it really quickly. But we're going to be talking about that Nintendo Direct that just happened for E3 2019. We're going to be talking about the sequel for Breath of the Wild. We're going to be talking about Banjo and Kazooie in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, along with Eredric and Animal Crossing New Horizons and Astral Chain and Luigi's Mansion 3 and Parents of Dragoon Remastered and Witcher 3. Like, there's some really cool stuff that happened today. Right. And we're going to get into that. This is going to basically be in the same... Uh, I guess format as the podcast, but maybe a little bit shorter. But we're going to try to fit in a lot of conversation very quickly. So that's how this is going to go. And for those who are new to the podcast, I don't know how we don't really do it. We talk about different things and we will reference the chat as we go on as well. Actually, the topic that we used for the podcast fits perfectly for today as well. Normally we have like an arrangement of topics, but we're kind of just jumping into this and, you know, mm -hmm. talking about the different things. Let's check what people are doing in the chat before we before we jump into the swing of things here. I see Roby was here, Josh was here, Super Chris. Oh, you're sick. Oh man. Oh well. Okay, so where do we start? Where do we start? Where should we start? I think um I think we could start with Breath of the Wild 2. <laughs> it's probably going to be called that. It's probably going to be called something else. We'll right? start with the end. Start with the end, probably talk about everything else in between, and then probably end with the end as well. Because <laughs> we can talk about that forever. We yeah, can talk about that forever, literally, honestly. Literally, I have like several videos planned. Several videos. I want to have more. three videos come out every day for the next week. It's not possible for me because I don't have a <laughs> seven-man team, each on salary with a whole bunch of equipment and stuff, and one person, this is not even my job. I want it to be, but it's not. Right. Um, so it's going to be kind of hard. But there's a lot to talk about. What should we talk about first in reference to Zelda? Uh, first, it's up. <sighs> I first want to say that I don't know if you remember Brandon, and I talk, I brought up it in a couple of the podcasts. But I've mentioned a couple times that there was someone telling me that there may be something big for Zelda mm -hmm. this year at E3. Right. I should pay more attention to the source now. Uh, for real. Uh, you know, and we both talked about how the next Zelda might be closer than people realize, right? Now, yeah. neither of us neither of us said for sure it's happening, right? So we're not right. going to take full credibility. We're no, not, I won't we're not take taking credit, credit for this yeah. like, being the right prediction. We talked about it as an option, but mm -hmm. we never considered it as a likely option. Yeah, I made a video, but I, I kind of said it I probably wouldn't happen. <laughs> yeah, like, this is one of those things that you don't expect. But both you and I, I think, kind of agreed that seeing Breath of the Wild by next year was fairly likely, and mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, Brandon, but I think you're also on the train of thought that we might even see the game come out by the end of next year. Oh, I'm 100% that this is going to be a holiday 2020 especially, game. Especially now that they teased, they teased it now, mm -hmm. this year. So right. I'm on the, a lot of people feel it's going to come out later, and if you consider other Zelda games, that's not crazy, because most Zelda games take right. years to come out. But... There's some things to consider here. If you look at the way Nintendo's handled most of their game and Zelda, and not Zelda announcements, but game announcements recently, right? They have the longest we wait is a year and a half. Even with Animal Crossing, right? Mm -hmm. As we're seeing, the game was announced last September, and we've got a release date for it a little bit later than we expected, but it's coming out March. So that's a year and a half, right? Mm -hmm. Super Mario Odyssey. If you want to count the tease for Super Mario Odyssey, which wasn't an official announcement yet. That was the Oct October 2016, um, and it came out mm -hmm. October 2017. So that was a year right. for Super Mario Odyssey, right? Xenoblade Chronicles 2 announced January 2017, came out December 2017, right? Super Smash Bros. Ultimate announced March 2018, came out December 2018. So these are some major, big AAA Nintendo games for the Switch mm -hmm. generation that have been announced and are coming out within a year and a half of their, their announcement. Right. So with that in mind, there is tons of precedent to think that if Nintendo announces a game and then has actual gameplay for it, right? right. To think it comes out within a year and a half, I'd say I would. I, would, I don't think it's crazy to think. No. Um, Especially but, since on. not only have they been doing that lately, but Breath of the Wild was like the reason they're doing that because they let so many fans down with two delays. They they even said themselves that that's something they never want to do again. So for them to do it again with the sequel would be really weird. 
But um, we should, to play devil's advocate, right, we should bring up Metro Prime 4. That is an exception right. to the rule. But they show right. no gameplay. They I show think no the, gameplay for Metro Prime 4. The difference with that is there was a reason to show it early, whereas Zelda has no reason. There's no reason they could, they if they're not going to run off and steer, why even yeah, show it now? They have There's no reason. No reason. There's Prime, other games. They needed to show it because they wanted to reassure fans that the 2D game on the 3DS wasn't the only thing happening with Metroid. Um, for this, nobody is out here crying for Breath of the Wild 2. Right. No one is out here like, I have to have 3D Zelda or all hope is lost and the Zelda series is dead. Like, no. True, true. That wasn't a thing. That's absolutely true. And another thing to consider here, if you look at the trailer, it's very, very dark. Right, and it's yeah. liter a literal sequel to Breath of the Wild, right? Mm -hmm. So dark sequel using the same engine. It's, all, it's probably gonna be somewhat adapted, so it's better for Switch. But it's using the same right. engine as as, yeah, as Breath of the Wild on, on Wii U and Switch, right? So what are all of those things sort of related to? Let's think about Ocarina of Time and Dora's Mask. Use the same mm -hmm. engine, somewhat adapted because you know it's more powerful, you know, to run better. Right. But still, same engine. Um, it's a literal sequel, right? Like. And it's very, very dark. It's 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 a very similar analogy here. That game came out very quickly, less than two years, I think. Like it had a very short development time. We could be looking at a similar situation. Now, of course, Breath of the Wild is a big open world game, and I would hope that the sequel is also a big open world game. Right. So there's a lot of content to fit into there. But what people have to understand is once you have the once the game engine is in place, that's half mm -hmm. the job already. Right, yeah. that, that literally, if you have the engine, the engine sometimes can take a couple of years to be to put together, right? And that's one of the reasons why Breath of the Wild took so long, because they were working so hard to get the physics engine to run properly and do all the things they wanted it to do. If mm -hmm. the physics engine was in place sooner, Breath of the Wild would have come out a lot sooner as well. I think it would have been a 2015 game. It would have actually made its first release date. That was their reasoning in interviews for why it so, took so long, so we can take their word for it, I think, right? Yeah. Makes sense. I think that would have been a three, about a three, three and a half year cycle instead of a five year cycle. So cycle. if you take that into consideration, right, five, that six, the whatever. engines are already put into place. So they're not, they're not going to have any delays trying to create all these extra physics, right? Mm -hmm. um, and they basically just to fill the game with content and just, right. you know, mo obviously there'll be some fine tuning of the engine and stuff. Hopefully this game has a much better frame rate than Breath of the yeah. Wild. Yeah, I think, I mean, we saw it when they kept optimizing that engine more and more for Switch. I think that was because they were working on this sequel, actually. Um, I, I said that way back when, I think it was because they were working on the that next It was weird that Zelda they continued game. to tinker with, with how the game right. ran, right? Yeah, it is interesting. So I think this one's definitely going to be a much smoother frame rate, and I think they're going to have, you know, a few extra visual effects. You know, the Wii U had very, like, weird draw distance issues that the switch games open world games typically don't have and they had like you know textures kind of loaded in in lines ahead of you like switch games don't really do and a lot of issues that the wii u had that you know switch much more capable system shouldn't have so i think the next one's just gonna be a, a step up maybe not you know mind-blowingly different because it's on the same same map we don't know how much they're gonna change it oh, but it's gonna be i think a noticeable upgrade Right, so I, I kind of I'm with you there, uh, but just going back to the point of it, I think it being it being a 2020 game, right? Mm -hmm. Like another thing to point out is that they obviously have story in mind already. If right. you've read previous Zella interviews, they don't start with story in development. That's something that happens late into development. So that's another hint that they're late into development already. Normally right. they just focus on gameplay mechanics and stuff, but if they have a story trailer, right? That was a story <laughs> trailer right there. I think they're really late into development already. Right. And Holiday 2020 would literally be three years after the release of not Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild came out early 2017, but it would be three years after the release of the Champions Ballad, the end of the Breath right. of the Wild DLC. So three years after the DLC campaign for Breath of the Wild would be our supposed prediction <laughs> for the sequel to Breath of the Wild. Another thing is, I think they've had this planned since Breath of the Wild, like since they were working on the first one. I don't think this is what, do you that, watch it that takes a lot of development time out of the picture because you know you're already planning, you're already making the story up before your even like before the previous game's done. You have the plans as soon as that game's done, you just hit the ground running working on the next one. You don't have any sort of 
time in between we're like oh what direction do we want to go to fiddling around with all kinds of wacky ideas like they did with breath of the wild you just go okay i know what do i want to do maybe they'll change a few things here and there as needed but they're just going to hit the ground running go develop the game true and i want to point out that while i did have a source that was telling me that there'd be something big for zelda for this e3 a public source from reset era king zell was saying that something big for breath of the wild fans would happen next year mm -hmm. well that guy's got a lot of things right. Uh, so, for example, Link's Awakening would be one, <laughs> Box Boy being another. I, I'm, I'm willing to side with him that he has legitimate inside sources, and considering the Breath of the Wild right. 2 was just announced, basically, no, not basically, literally, it happened. Literally. <laughs> um, I think, you know, considering the only information we have, I think 2020 is definitely my prediction. I think holiday 2020 is when it's going to happen. Yeah. I would actually be so shocked if they... It could even happen sooner, but let's yeah. let's let, let's go with holiday 2020. Yeah, if it's not out by holiday 2020, I will be completely shocked. Like, I I would I, I do not expect anything, but like by that time it's gonna be released. All right. I don't see Nintendo. Yeah, because all the things. I mean, there's just too many. We we talk about so many points. I'm just convinced that that is how you know that's just how it's gonna play out. Right, and I mean 2020 is already filling out. Right, we had No More Heroes three. Yeah. For example, that's amazing. I didn't see that coming, right? Because we just got the spinoff this year, right? Yeah, and they were all like, oh, maybe if it sells well, we'll think about starting development on No More Heroes 3. They're already working on it. According to the interview, they're like six months into development, but that looks like got a lot done very quickly. Um, so there's that, and I would assume Beta 3 is in the cards there. Something we didn't see, right? I know some of you guys are talking about the chat, and we'll get to the chat in a moment. Um, Metro Prime Trilogy. No, nothing. Yeah, or, no. no, the 2D Metro wasn't there either. No Metroid. Zero right, Metroid no mentioned. I think it's weird. Um, and for the record, guys, I am super hyped and excited about the Nintendo Direct. If you saw my reactions to Banjo and, and Zelda, I think you know how excited I, right. I am. Right? Very, 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 very happy. I don't think it's... There's really no doubt in my mind that Nintendo had the best show by far. It's not even close. Oh, Everyone really killed it. Yeah, everyone was talking about how every presentation was a snooze fest. Then you watch the Nintendo Direct. It's shorter than every other presentation, right? And it's super fast-paced. Game announcement after game announcement after game announcement. They did not dwell on anything, right? No. Perhaps the longest... I'll have to double-check the timestamps, but I feel like the longest segment might have been Luigi's Mansion 3. I think it might have been, yeah. It might have been, and that was great. It was just enough to learn about the game, uh, and they did, it wasn't even that long. It was like maybe like three, four minutes. Tops, tops. So... Yeah. Uh, I think it was super fast paced and there was mostly gameplay. All the other companies just showed CGI trailers, right. which annoys the hell out of me. I want to see gameplay. Oh my god, um, so much. Especially with how good games look these days. Right. I, they're CGI they're so trailers, beautiful. What are you doing? So, most companies had way less to announce. They were a lot, the presentations were a lot longer with less in them, and it was mostly just CGI and not actual gameplay. Mm -hmm. Nintendo's Dark was shorter faster pace with a lot more announcements and tons and tons of gameplay that's not taking into account that the games in my opinion are better because that's subjective but the other points are like objective right more gameplay mm -hmm. faster paced more announcements like that that's factual right there but in my opinion the games that were announced are really really good i realize this is actually a tangent i'm gonna get to a point soon but i'm just gonna say my my highlights let's talk about that first um okay. my personal highlights of the show obviously zelda um, mm -hmm. obviously Banjo Kazooie. Mm -hmm. I actually kind of like the Erdrick uh, and and Luminari, like the, all the Dragon Quest heroes. That, that kind of warmed me up to the idea yeah. of the, not just the DLC package, but also Dragon Quest XI S itself. So that's another thing. Banjo Dragoon Remastered really excites me, mm -hmm. and also um, is it what Trials of Mana? It's like a, a, a remaster of an it was old Trials mana of game. Mana and Collection of Mana. Right, but Trials of Mana seems to be a remake of an older mana game as well. That looks really good. I'm oh, really okay. excited about that. And then Witcher Three. Yeah. Man, and of course Luigi's Mansion 3 and Animal Crossing. Like, those look right. really good. I'm actually surprised by how good Animal Crossing looks. Like, those, all, all those oh, games yeah. right there, I'm super, I'm just those, super hyped about. I agree. Those, those, those are mine for sure. I, I think mine actually are probably less than yours for my big games. I think a lot of the ones you mentioned, like, Mana, I'm, I'm not really too big on. No More Heroes 3, I've never played the other ones, but I'm interested. 
Um, in Panzer Dragoon, I didn't even know what that was. You were freaking out, and I was just like, what is what is this? It looks pretty. I don't know what it it's, is. A, it's a remaster of Panzer Dragoon, and it looks gorgeous. Is it gorgeous. just a remaster? It looked like a full remake. Not a remake. remaster, it was a remake. I'm sorry. It's a full-on remake. I was um, like, if that's a remaster, that game. Like this is a very good. old game. This is an old game for the Sega Saturn, okay? Oh, dang. Early 90s. Okay. Um, yeah, but it looked good. But for yeah. me, it was mostly Animal Crossing, Luigi's Mansion, Witcher 3, Zelda and Banjo. Those are the big ones for me. Oh my Animal god. Animal Crossing, even though Animal Crossing got delayed, it's only about three months out from where I actually thought it was going to be. So it's not too big. And it's not that bad. For what we're getting, it, it looks like they're going above and beyond for this one. So We haven't even mentioned Link's Awakening. I missed that. Oh one. yeah, Link's Awakening. I'm really, I'm really excited for that too. It's like I Link's have, Awakening yeah. remake, and it has Zelda Maker inside of it. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's pretty awesome. And let's not even forget about Pokemon Sword and Shield, but that was during the Pokemon right. Direct mostly. They mentioned it during this one. Yeah, I, it's pretty much ex exactly what I thought. They were just going to be like, oh, hey, we, yeah, we talked about it in the Direct. Uh, here's like one tiny thing. Okay, bye. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed the Treehouse footage on it, though. I thought it was really good. I was very distracted during it. I don't. They showed a little bit of it, but I don't know if they really told us anything we didn't already know. Yeah. I think they just kind of showed us gameplay. I'm surprised they didn't start Route 1. But maybe they just don't want really to talk about show off. yet. But they, they're showing off the big thing, though. They show off the wild area. That's what people right, want right, to right. see. So I'm actually happy they showed that off. That's what I wanted to see. Um, but let's get to the chat. I know I said we're going to talk a little bit about Metroid. We're going to talk about Metroid when we get mm -hmm. after we address the chat for a bit. So a few things. Oh, my spiral prediction was correct. I'm surprised about that. <laughs> I'm surprised my prediction was correct. I know it sounds funny, but it's true. Hey there, Mastermind. Hello there, Solid Fox. Oh my gosh, Solid Fox brought up Astral Chain. We didn't even mention that. That's like a huge one. Oh, of course. Astral Chain was huge as well. There's, that, yeah. That's the point. We're missing games that we're actually really excited about. I really want Link's Awakening, and I really want Astral Chain. I forgot to mention them, but th there's a lot of good games that we're at the show. Right. So Brandon Stallion added me. Hey, Andres. You know, I'm starting to realize after seeing reactions to Banjo that Banjo is a character I didn't even know I wanted. I actually really want to play as Banjo. And on the Spiral Mountain stage, super badly. Oh man, dude. dude. First of all, they you you double badly. faked us out on that. They double faked us out, Brandon. <laughs> like, it's because first we got the whole, you know, Air Dragon Quest character thing. So people were it was saying, oh yeah, that's it for you fools. No banjo. <laughs> banjo is dead. Like I saw little like tweets banjo like after that, people saying, oh, when when Erdrix announced, everyone's gonna feel so bad about banjo. Ho. Oh, <laughs> I, but I, I held, I held, I held faith. Yeah. I still had hope when they showed it off. I was like, I think when we were talking about there being two, we might yeah. be right. And as it turned out, we were right. Literally, when you saw Eric, you were like, "There's gonna be two announcements," and I was like, "Yep." <laughs> yeah, when we, we did not, yeah, we didn't, we didn't lose much faith. We, we were just we, like, "There's two. Wow, G wow, confirmation that there's two announcements right yeah. here." Yeah, I still believe that banjo was happening, but. I mean, it, it, it hit me a little, but I, I was like, no, I'm going to believe. And sure enough, it happened. But they did the thing where they also, um, they, they, they showed self-awareness of the memes and the jokes and people talking about how Banjo and Kazooie should just be an echo of Duck Hunt. Mm -hmm. And what they do, they they redid the, the Donkey Kong, um, the, King, the King K. Rool trailer, except King K. Rool is already there chilling with, with Diddy Kong and Donkey Kong. Really? And then Duck Hunt faked them out. And then, of course, Banjo Kazooie comes in, but it's also really cool because they're showing other characters that Rare used to work on, right? Like, you know, the Donkey Kong characters, including King K. Rool, and that's how they show off Banjo and Kazooie. I don't I think I could cool. have imagined a better way to, to, to introduce them. No, it was great. I did think that the, the second fake out with Duck Hunt was like a little bit like, okay, yeah, I. I you did this before, so I'm not too like. I'm, I'm still like 100%. Banjo's about to beat the shit out of Duck right. Hunt. The moment I saw King K. Happy. Rule, like, like there is no way. There's no way. Yeah. They, there's as no... soon as I saw them group three rare characters together, I'm like, yep. This guy, yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, and then you saw right. the, the puzzle piece fly across yeah. the river, like, oh! Yeah, once that flew through, that, 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 there's Done no deal. way. Right? The Duck Hunt thing wasn't even like. A legit, I like, thought oh it was my. hilarious. Yeah, it was, it was just a nod towards the jokes about yeah. Duck Hunt being, you know, Duck, Banjo being a, a an echo for Duck Hunt. Oh my God, that the self awareness of Sakurai and the Smash Team, just incredible. It's just incredible. 
But the actual stage, Spiral Mountain, which we we're right about, but I mean, that's a pretty safe prediction that if Bad Zoo is going to be in, Spiral Mantle would be it. It was beautiful. And I got to tell you, there's going to be a video on this. So just expect it soon. But the way they show it off, Spiral Mountain, how detailed it looked, it just made me want an actual banjo game, a new banjo game. Mm -hmm. Like, it even, like, the, the grass texture and stuff honestly reminded me of how Mario Odyssey looks. And when they had that angle of Banjo staring off into the bridge into the Gratilda's lair, I was like, right. oh my god, this needs to be an actual hole-on game. Like, mm -hmm. that's the vibe I got. Now, I'm not saying that's what they're doing here, right? I'm right. not saying that's what they're doing here. But that's what I want. And I want to point out one more thing, though. We got confirmation, finally, that they are linking Smash... Well, at least they did it with, with Dragon Quest. They literally... They finally did it. We've been theorizing about this forever, right? But when they showed off the Dragon Quest characters, immediately after the trailer transitioned very seamlessly into another trailer for Dragon Quest XI S. So, because we didn't get that with Joker, right? We they, we thought right. we were going to get Persona 5. They didn't actually do it. We got Scramble, which I'm still disappointed about. But, you know, they actually had a mainline Dragon Quest game linked to the Dragon Quest characters. And we did still technically get Scramble for Persona, which is something. It is something Persona for Persona 5, mm -hmm. right? For Joker. So we are seeing that there seem, does seem to be a game linked to each DLC character. So even right. though we didn't get an actual Banjo-Kazooie game announced besides him being in Smash Brothers, I feel like there's a lot of reason to believe that we're going to get something Banjo later this right. year. I definitely think they're going to announce Rare Replay in the next Direct. I think they're waiting a little bit because he's coming in the fall. Um, right. If he sense. was the next character up, I think they would announce it at E3. But since he's coming in the fall, I think they'll announce it probably in an August or September direct. <sighs> Rare replay is a safe one. It's I don't know if they'll announce a new Banjo game. I do get your point that it looked very detailed, but I also thought that... All I, the, 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 a lot of the Smash yeah. stuff looks really detailed. They're, they're all really detailed. And there's a lot of tricks they use for like things in the background, a lot of 2D elements and things like layer 2D and stuff. Like the Breath of the Wild stage looks like at first glance, oh, that's actually like the entirety of Breath of the Wild running the background. But then you realize if you look a little closer, it's actually a couple pictures layered and the smoke effect coming up. But do you agree with me though that it at least made you think about it? It did, it did. It made I, you think about it. I thought they might trans. I thought they might like transition into a like banjo announcement. Yeah. I don't know, man. I, I think I'm really confident in saying that there will be something on Switch besides Smash that Banjo will be playable in, whether it's Rare Replay or just Banjo and Kazooie or Banjo Tooie, you know, be, just being ported mm -hmm. over, or the crazy Pine Sky Dream that we're alluding to in the new Banjo game, you know, right. or even a Banjo remaster is another consideration as well. Like, That'd be nice. those are all the options, right? Just straight up Banjo ports, that's one. Uh, Rare Replay is another. Honestly, Banjo remaster might... or Banjo 3. I might like a remake of the original Banjo more than Banjo 3, just because I don't know how well Rare would actually make a Banjo 3. I just feel like it, it would have to be some sort of collaborative effort between Nintendo yeah. and Rare. Like, I don't, I don't, I agree, I don't trust it's, Rare. Because I don't want a Banjo up. 3 and it's like, this is ukulele, but Banjo. Like, the thing is, I'm almost, I almost want to say, and I, I don't think, this would, I don't know, but it almost feels like to me that if there was a new Banjo game, it might even be exclusive for Nintendo Switch, which I think, I realize some people are like, no, that's stupid. It's it's owned by Microsoft. Why would they make an exclusive Switch game? Well, it wouldn't necessarily actually have to be exclusive, but it would, no matter what, sell way more on Switch than any other platform, right? Yeah, for sure. Because it appeals to Nintendo fans. So, it could still be available on Xbox, but it's going to sell the most on Switch. Regardless, I, Microsoft probably wouldn't care too much because they know where yeah. the money's coming from anyway. I'm calling it right here, right now. Super Lucky's Tale is going to sell. It's going to immediately crush what it sold on Xbox One when it comes out on Switch. Just, just, just to destroy it. Did you say? Uh, what did you say? Super Lucky Tale. Super Lucky's Tale. It's a. Oh, uh, I saw that platformer. Rare style platformer. I didn't realize that that was a Microsoft property. Yeah, that's. Uh, it was exclusive to the, to the Xbox system. I did not realize sure. that when we saw yeah. it. So that's cool. So that's another Microsoft published game on Switch. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. That that game though, it's gonna immediately destroy what like the lifetime sales of it on Xbox One. And there's there's no chance. Yeah. That it won't. Well, I mean, I'm not really. I don't know if I'll get it um, on Switch. I I, would, it, I mean, it looks cool, but it doesn't look like so cool that I would get it for sure.
But knowing right. that, though, does pique my interest a little bit. Uh, but I, I said I would get to the chat, and I barely touched the chat. So let's get back Sorry, to the guys. chat. Sorry, guys. Get back to you. Um, Joe is shocked. I, I, man, I'm still trying to get over everything. Solid mm -hmm. Foxy thinks that'll be early 2021. All right. Josh, you, you are thinking it's going to come out 2020. Okay. Computer Robot says, thank you both, Andre, for restart more about Nintendo for recreating your Link's Awakening reaction this morning. That's how all our reactions are when things get hyped. Bro. It's Zelda! Oh my god. It's Zelda! Man. It is... <laughs> This is incredible. I'm just, oh my god, it was amazing. Um, wait, P Sanjay, you're saying people laughed at you for saying a Breath of the Wild sequel would be announced at E3, but look who's laughing now. That you got him, you got him, Sanjay Joe, 100%. Good job, bro. Sanjay Joe is saying though he thinks Zelda is very likely for next year since they don't near have nearly as much work since the entire map is done unless they're making slight changes. I think they have to make oh, slight changes. Sure. But... I'm gonna make a whole video on differences between that I think is gonna happen between this map and the original Breath of the Wild, but just it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm, for sure. There's no way they're gonna be like, oh, explore the exact same world you just explored, but a slightly new story. <laughs> new game took three years, guys. Vilbeard, how you doing, buddy? It was it was it was an incredible day, absolutely. <laughs> Isabel Maine, the Breath of the Wild sequel is the modern Majora's Mask. It truly is. It's yeah. a great point, and that's one of the reasons why we think 2020 is not crazy at all. Oh, um, it's. I think 2021 is crazy, to be honest. That's like uh, a, that's lot, not, a lot of nah. people think 2021. And I think the main reason that's for that is because crazy. Zelda games, but Zelda games do have a history of being delayed. So <laughs> you know that we should bear that in mind. Shunji to Furukawa. I literally thought it was the worst E3 ever. Then they saved it at the end. Solid E3. Really? You thought it was um, the worst E3 ever? Well, I thought it was amazing well, before then. I, I did expect Metroid and Pikmin. And right. I, so, but at the same time, I feel like you shouldn't... And I'm not saying you did this, right? And I, saw, I, do, I do know some of you are. Uh, but, like, I just feel like you shouldn't necessarily judge the Direct negatively if it doesn't have a particular game you want. I feel like you should just, just judge the show to see if it has enough good games that excite you. And I mean, if, if there's not enough good games that excite you, then okay, that's your opinion and you're entitled to it. But like, for example, me, I wanted to see Metroid and Pikmin. I didn't get it. That does disappoint me a little bit. I wanted to play those right. games. I want those games. And I do think Nintendo made, made, made a mistake by not having Metroid Prime Trilogy come out this year. I think that's a mistake, right? I think what they're doing is they're, they're delaying it to come out closer with Metroid Prime 4, right? Or some sort of other right. weird plan. We'll, we'll save that for a little I think bit later. assuming it was real and they were going to have it come out, you know, this year, delaying it is a mistake, yes. Yeah, so I, I think that's a mistake, but at the same time, I don't judge the Direct any lesser for it, though, right? <laughs> I think they've shown plenty of games to excite me moving forward. Like like I said, I, I brought up all those games and I still miss some that I'm super hyped for. Like, I'm not concerned about having a lot of good games to play. I'm just wondering why... Nintendo had this completely barren first half of 2019. Literally, May had no published Nintendo game. And the original rumors for Metro Prime Trilogy were that it's been ready for a while. Assuming they're true, they could have released it then. Throw Metroid fans a bone. And I would have understood if they maybe wanted to hold off a Metroid because they have a 2D Metroid ready, as other rumors suggested. But that also was not shown off either. So I just think it's weird that they just decided to not have any Metroid. And I'm not expecting any Metroid for this year at this point. I, I, I kind of like your plan at this point that what's going to happen is that we're probably going to get 2D Metroid next year, Metroid Prime Trilogy the year after, and then Metroid Prime 4. Actually, my predictions was that we'll get Metroid Prime Trilogy next year, 2D after that, and then Metroid Prime 4. But, I mean, it could go... That, that way is also possible. That's just not exactly what I said. Right. Okay, so, okay, I see what you're saying. And maybe it's not, like, literally one year next year, next year. It could be more, like, maybe Prime Trilogy, then six to eight months later, 2D Metroid, right. then six to, eight months, six to eight months after that, it's Metroid Prime 4. So it doesn't have to be a three-year cycle. It could be more like a two to two-and-a-half-year cycle. So maybe it's not, like, that much... Maybe Prime 4 is not that far away, right? But... I do think there's going to be a certain order here, and it does look like that order that would, pattern's not going to start until next year. That'd be about uh, three to four years of development time. So, yeah, maybe they could get it out a little bit earlier than 2022 yeah. holiday. Maybe. maybe. So 2022 we'll holiday would be about four years. So, I don't know if they need that or not. I don't know. They do, have, they do want Metro Prime 4 to be 
a mm-hmm. really good game. Like it, I, I do think Nintendo wants to hold it to a quality level comparable right. to Breath of the Wild, which would also be comparable to the original Metro Prime games in terms of quality, right? right. So I think they they they're gonna make sure it, whenever, whenever whenever it comes out that it's gonna hit that that target in yeah. terms of quality. So we'll see what happens when it when it does eventually come out. That is a game that I've learned my lesson. I'm not going to... <laughs> Metro Prime 4, they don't have an established team for that that can get it done, churn it out. So that that's just saying it's just going to take a while. But, you know, hopefully sooner than later, we'll, we'll see. Maybe we'll get a teaser next year. A teaser. A soft, subtle, subtle, subtle teaser. But I'm mm-hmm. not even sure we'll get that. But next year's actually looking really good, right? We got No More yeah. Heroes 3, Zelda, Animal Crossing. I would assume Bayonetta 3 could come out next year. Right. Right. Um, no, they don't want to talk about that for some reason. I'll even put out this. I think we could see the Retro Studios game next year, which was also not at the show. And... Yeah. Dude, I... Mm. <laughs> and uh-huh. either 2D Metroid or Prime Trilogy, I think, would come out next year. I'm just going to say 2D Metroid, because I'm done I'm done predicting Prime Trilogy and being wrong. <laughs> so I'm just going to say Metroid something next year. Like, there's a lot. And I think there's even a chance we could see a new Super Mario game next year. Maybe. Like, that's a lot right there. Right. That's a lot. Not, not maybe not all that comes out next year, but the next year is already looking really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely think it's not going to be a 2018 situation where it's like, okay, this is an okay year. I think it's going to be another great year. Right, right. I think we're we're in for another good cycle. And of course, the Monolith Soft did technically show up at, at E3, I think, because we saw Zelda, <laughs> right? but we did not see any new that Monolith I, Soft game. It developed exclusively by them. I I knew that they. That's I said the Monolith Soft. You know, when they were hiring for Zelda, I'm like, that's it's gonna be a 3D Zelda, and sure enough, that's what they're were hiring. Maybe for. maybe those highlights are related to this to what we just saw. I'm yeah. I'm comp- well, this uh, trailer specifically, the or sequel. you just mean the game? The game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm not saying they hired all people to work on the trailer. I'm saying that. That's what I was confused yeah. with. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, 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 that's exactly what I think is happening. I think they're they're working on this next this next game. Yeah. So I mean. There you go. We, that, I, I, I kind of agree. That's probably what it is. Roby, like, you can't believe we still don't have a- absolutely anything about Metroid. Yeah, man. We, we, Solid Foxes. We got, we got Dark Samus Amiibo, though. Oh, yeah. There we go. Shadow of Nexus. Someone spoiled Banjo and Breath of the Wild for you? I'm sorry. That ah. sucks. But think of it this way. When you watch the trailers, there's still so much you can enjoy and take from them. Mm-hmm. Josh asks, yeah, it's a big step from New Leaf. Yeah, Animal Crossing. Yeah, Super Chris, you both are talking about Animal Crossing. Yeah, Animal Crossing looks amazing. Yeah. I, I, I'm not, I you guys know, honest. well, maybe not all of you guys know, but I'm not the biggest Animal Crossing. I'm not saying I dislike Animal Crossing. I want to make that clear. I don't dislike Animal Crossing. I've bought a few of the games. I played the GameCube one, the DS one. I don't like the mobile thing, but I did technically have it on my phone. Like, I like it i like it as a franchise but what i saw for this trailer has me actually more excited than usual i like how there's a lot of this you're camping you're doing a lot of stuff with the environment more so there is even some platforming in it apparently and right. you can you can share a whole island with eight players online that's really cool apparently it's like a camera mode you can get a bunch of really cool looking angles at it i think the game looks beautiful like this yeah. this looks really good to me i'm really excited for it i'm glad that they're ha- had a bit of a departure here that mm-hmm. that's pretty exciting to me and camping or yeah not camping crafting crafting i don't know why i said camping i was just thinking camp for some reason um but crafting it's a thing i called it i was like there's uh, they're for sure putting crafting in this game and there they are which is great i loved it in pocket camp it was like the only good feature of pocket camp was the crafting mechanic and i i'm glad it's it's a thing you can craft all kinds of furniture and tools and that platforming you were talking about where you get the pole and you cross yeah, the river. Yeah, that was super awesome. I, I saw a comment underneath the uh, the video for the trailer and it was like, Bridges exists. And it was like, uh, New Horizons. I'm about to end this man's whole career. And it was just the pole. Because like, you literally, the point of Bridges is so you don't have to... Yeah. You just build a bunch of bridges so you don't have to like go uh, for I the get bridge it. to cross. I thought that bridge. was hilarious. We don't need bridge builders. Um, but I'm very curious about how things are going to work this time since you're not the... I mean, it's just like the old ones, I guess. You're not You're not the uh, leader anymore. You're not the mayor. 
you don't have as much influence so do we know that I'm that can't curious. actually happen like maybe you can still get that at some point or no uh, i don't think so it's it's an island getaway so i don't okay. see how you become so, the I mayor mean, i getaway. guess I, I, well i guess what's cool is it, it's a different spin on it right so you're not like expecting the same thing with this animal crossing you know right it, i mean the older ones didn't have you being the mayor either I just kind of thought they would continue in that direction. Right. Well, maybe what they could do is that they have this game come out, but maybe there's a DLC expansion that comes out a year later or six months later that is kind of more like a more of that take. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm I like upset that it's not there. I'm just curious about what direction. Right. They're head. Well, I like this direction. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I know Animal Crossing Stardew Valley are already fairly similar, but I got like Stardew Valley on steroids vibes. Um, right. When I was seeing this, and I did like Stardew Valley, even though it I love Stardew gave Valley. me an existential crisis, which is what my whole problem with these games that are like just basically living a life, because it's like you're living a life when you already have a life, and it takes so many time. <laughs> it, okay, I'm, I'm done with it. When Animal Crossing, this was a vacation. You can just chillax. Right. When when Animal Crossing does come out, though, I'm gonna start streaming it, and I'm just gonna be like, help me get out of this existential crisis. Animal Crossing: New Horizons. That's gonna be a title. For us. It's gonna it would be, be a new horizon for you. I'll that was nuts. a terrible joke. And too easy. Way too easy. I'm pretty excited for Spyro Reignited Trilogy. I thought it looked like pretty much a PS1 game. But yeah. <laughs> I'm, no, kidding. PS1. I'm kidding. I'm uh, kidding. I thought it ran like garbage. It looked it looked pretty blurry. The frame rate was mm -hmm, not good. It still looked way better. Well, it still looked beautiful compared to the original. Um, but it's coming finally. Uh, and... You know something I am slightly worried about, but not really too worried. Um, a lot of people are reporting, and I saw this in the treehouse. Link's Awakening does not run very well. That's just that, that it'll run. It'll run well eventually. Like not even like it runs a little bit bad. Like it runs really bad, really bad. Like it's supposed to hit 60 FPS, and it constantly is dipping into the 30s and big stutters and. <sighs> Excuse me. It's kind of one of those things where if you go into a house, you're like, oh, it's so much smoother. And you go outside and you're like, ooh, I don't like this. Like, even in the stream, I noticed when they, like, talked to people and it zoomed in and they had less to render, like, the frame rate got better. It was bad. I think it's something that'll smooth out by the game, by the time the game. I'm releases. hoping. I'm I hopeful. So. I, I, think I really do. Unreal Engine 4, I think that kind of makes me think it's an Unreal Engine 4 title <gasps> even to be honest oh man sorry just because just... how much those need to be i already thought it looked like an unreal engine 4 title in every aspect um but i think even more so now just because how much i think they're gonna have to optimize to get it to work to run i think it's even more telling that it's probably an unreal engine 4 title i have faith that it's gonna run fine uh, i, I want to i want to put up the show you guys this image um, right. open image a new tab. Just look at that, guys. Look at that beauty. I'm sure it shows up on the stream. It's probably somewhat cut off, but... Put it on the stream? Yeah, put it on the stream. I know it's somewhat I cut off, a... but... Stupid ad. Hold on. There we... Oh, yes. I... This art is amazing. I love this art. And it's like... I hope there's more perspectives like this where you can just see the world. Like, That'd be like, great. Like, what if they... All they have to do is add a camera mode. Just so you can look at the world like this sometimes. Hmm. Like, this looks amazing. Great. I'm wondering how much of the world is actually rendered at a time, though. So if a camera angle like this is even possible in-game. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how... Yeah, obviously, I, there's probably loading screens between areas and stuff. So I don't know how much is actually being rendered at once. And with how much framework issues they're already having, just rendering as much as they are, I'm curious about if that will be an option. I'm just going to stick with what I've been saying. I have faith that by the time the game comes out, it will run fine. Right. This is not a massive open world 60 FPS AAA mm -hmm. 4K game. This is a remake of a 2D game. And albeit that there's a lot True. of very pretty graphical little tricks and enhancements to this game. I understand that. But let's be real here. I think it's really just that they're still optimizing the game. I think that's all, all right. it really is. There's no way this the Switch can't run this. Oh, There's it no can. Way. I'm just curious about yeah. 
how they're gonna get it. Like, keep in mind when we first saw Yoshi. I mean, even if they have to, just run the game at a solid at a lock sol at a lock thirty instead of sixty. You don't Zelda I games don't ever run at sixty. They never run at sixty. The two D ones do. Really? Yeah. Okay. Well, the older SNES ones and the NES. I don't know what the NES. The SNES ones were. Uh, Link Between Worlds is. A Link the, Between Worlds. One of the older. Is 3DS. Yeah, it ran at 60 frames per second on okay, the 3DS. Link. Link to the Past was 60 FPS. Okay, this is news to me. Um, but the only I, ones that didn't are the DS ones. But that was because it was the DS and yeah. DS was um, but the DS. I, I, but older, older 2D games on the Game Boy and stuff. I, I don't think they would run at 60. They did. Okay. The Game, right. the Game Boy ones did. I, I, I don't know. More. Um, so you're, that's what you're saying. A surprising amount of Game Boy titles ran at 60 frames per second, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, if they're shooting for 60, fine, but I, I still stand by my point. I just don't think... There's no way this game can't run well on Switch. It's just, I think it's just they're still in the middle of development. They haven't optimized it yet. And we see with every Nintendo game. Everyone's like, oh my god, the E3 version looks and runs like shit. And then, you know, by, by, by right before the time comes out, we see another expanded look at the game. Like, oh my god, it looks and runs so much better. It's like magic. I never right. saw this coming. But it happens with every major Nintendo game. Mm -hmm. So, I'm not worried. Yeah, my only point is, it's an, it's, oh, I'm almost certain. I'm like 99% certain. This, no. That oh. this is an Unreal Engine 4 title. Okay. And an Unreal Engine title, 4 title targeting 60 frames per second. Yoshi is also a 2D, albeit there's a lot more 3D effects to Yoshi. That is a 60 FPS Unreal Engine 4 title. And that game runs at 576 to 720p on the handheld. Not on handheld, docked. 5, okay. 576p to 720p docked. So you think so that the, so this, this game, game might have a bad resolution? I, yes, I'm curious about the resolution of this game. Now, I think it would be higher than Yoshi because, as I said, it's rendering less at a time. I'm just curious about how, if the lowering resolution is something that they're going to do to optimize the game since it does run, like, really badly. If it was just a few frames per second, I think they could just iron that out with absolutely no graphical changes, but it's like 30 frames per second less than their target frame rate. So I'm thinking they're gonna have to change some visual effects unless this is just a really old build. All right. Um, I understand, but I think we should just move on from the frame rate graphical talk. I think. I think we'll find out. I have right. hope. I think you bring up a good point about the Yoshi thing. The Yoshi thing, um, it's a little bit more graphically demanding than this. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have faith that it'll work out. Uh, but they did um, confirm that the color. I haven't seen the trials footage for it yet, by the way. But I did hear that the right. color dungeon is going to be in the in the game it is uh, so that's really cool so we are getting the deluxe content yeah. and of course and we're also getting a zelda maker mode which is really yeah cool. essentially it's more of a dungeon randomizer mode i'd put it than a zelda maker cause it's you don't not yeah it's not like complete zelda rooms. maker but you can yeah. put together different rooms and create different right. dungeon experiences and there there is different things you can do to the rooms like with if you have a link amiibo you can add shadow link to a, a room and he will chase you throughout the dungeon until you defeat him That's and apparently there's a bunch of other different things you can do like that but essentially it's known rooms but it's random patterns and you know you don't know which room you're going to go into next i think it's really cool um, yeah, I think that, that's going to add a lot of replayability to the game, or a, a, at least lasting appeal, right? Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Um, but let's let's get to trying to catch up with the chat here. Computer Robots Adam, how did you know when Donkey Kong was sitting down watching TV? How did you know that it was Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Kazooie Real Hill trailer? How did I know? Well, first of all, I was yeah, was, you were there for the podcast. I've I've been talking about Banjo Kazooie. For a really long time, like for over a year, we're talking about Banjo Kazooie. I always thought he had a really good chance, and as more and more evidence presented itself, I became more and more and more confident. And then, you know, I mean, I saw the data mine, right? I just saw the clues; they just fit together so well, right? But then, of course, with considering the history, the popular relationship between Microsoft, I just thought it made so much sense. But then we saw multiple insiders actually hear about it, right? So then it became even increasingly more likely. I had people who personally also told me that it was Banjo was going to be from the game in the game. You know, I heard about people who had, I like for example, Papagino said himself that he knew someone 
who heard from micro from a Microsoft representative that Banjo Kazooie was going to be in the game. So, <laughs> according to Papa Genos, I, I, Papa Genos is a great YouTuber, by the way, guys. Check him out. If you're into like leaks and stuff, he covers that ad nauseum, and not like the fake ones, the credible ones, all the credible ones. Like he doesn't, he's not one of those four. Like he just reads like Reddit and four chan posts. No, he, like when we hear something from like an actual developer or someone who works with the game, things of that nature that lead to potential leaks, things like that, he covers. So check him out. But like I trust him, right? And he also like he he said that from the person he he couldn't he couldn't release the information, but he said publicly that hey, someone if you knew if you knew who it was, you would trust them too, right? They came to me and they told me that they heard Banjo Kazooie from literally directly from Microsoft, right? So <laughs> that happened as well. That's public stuff, right? But like I said, I also had personal people came to me. A lot of insiders like Virgin Ben, read the Reset Era mod. Like there's a lot, and that was that's and this is all that came after. Right. This is not even counting my own just personal research and seeing all the information, like the, the different things said by developers and interviews and history and the data mine, things of that nature. So it just felt super likely. But then, you know, I was also on the train of thought that two DLC characters made a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then once they showed a Donkey Kong CGI trailer, I was like, OK, there's no way they're going to show Donkey Kong again. These are all third party DLC characters. Donkey Kong you know there's a rare connection between Donkey Kong rare especially when they showed King K. Rule as well right. there's no there's no way it wasn't it wasn't Banjo-Kazooie there's just no way <laughs> so yeah yeah and Banjo-Kazooie by the way I've also thought Banjo-Kazooie is always like the best fit for an E3 reveal like I I remember like last year like I think we were talking about like Banjo-Kazooie makes the most sense to be revealed at E3 yeah and on top of that Microsoft themselves they were sharing <laughs> and then advertising the Nintendo Direct so, Heavily. yeah. So we knew something Microsoft was going to happen, and I doubt it was just a that lucky game. So, um, right. Yeah, I, that I was very, I was very confident. So, let, let, but let's continue moving down the chat. Microsoft announced. I mean, Brandon, Brandon, if you actually want to talk about your own perspective on that, I, I realize I didn't even let you just. just no, I mean, we've talked about that so much in the past that I don't want to dwell it on too much. I think we should get on to okay. other stuff. All right, cool. Well, Shadow Next is saying that Microsoft announced way more than Nintendo. They had 60 games on Microsoft's conference. They did have 60 games, but, I mean, the ones at Nintendo were way heavier hitters. Okay, I did technically say Nintendo had a lot more announcements, so I guess I'm wrong. Um literally but i felt like the announced nintendo had were all very fast paced and we saw a lot more gameplay mm -hmm. science show i cannot blah, 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 blah. wait for spongebob battle for bikini bottom rehydrated okay i have no interest in that game because i maybe if i see it it'll look cool i don't know <laughs> phil Sp josh is saying phil spencer from microsoft said he's happy that banjo's in smash bros ultimate yeah i mean yeah. phil spencer is a gamer as well i mean that's a great relationship and Nintendo and Microsoft working together is only going to bring out many great things. Yeah. It's only, it's going to make Microsoft money. Okay, so mm -hmm. it's a good move for them. Isol Main saying Mario Galaxy 3 for 2020. I do think we're going to see something about a new Mario game potentially next year. Cynical, we got Spiral Trilogy before Prime Trilogy. Indeed. Indeed, yeah. we did. Oof. <laughs> um, but Prime Trilogy did come out for other systems and was revealed a while ago, so, you know, I would say it had an advantage. Uh, and before we get a direct like next month and it's like a shadow drop of prime trilogy <laughs> Not, i doubt that but you no. know no i would like to see sunshine too as well shadow for sure brandstein added me who do you think will be the last two dlc characters for smash i think we'll get crash and scorpion with sub-zero as a free echo who comes with the purchase of scorpion or the fighter's pass i hope um, crash is not in the dlc <laughs> Scorpion uh, could be cool, but I don't know. I I I'm not sure yet. I feel like if they were gonna not Scorpion, they would have wanted to get him out first, just because more Comet Eleven. I'll tell you this: but... I believe that the next two, the final two Smash DLC characters are gonna be from Capcom and Bandai Namco. Ubisoft again, Rayman. <laughs> or. Uh, Ubisoft should go. get Rayman, but there's no Rayman games. Uh, maybe the next Spider Spin. Yeah. Um, so, like, we got confirmation of Square getting a rep, right? And Microsoft getting a rep. But the thing is, if 
I really like the me fighter, the me costume theory because we got the old me costumes that didn't come back from Smash Wii U. Uh, we got that from the Joker package, the Sega ones, right? So obviously Microsoft is probably gonna probably get some maybe Minecraft or Master Chief me costumes with Banjo Kazooie, maybe some rare ones. But with Square, I wouldn't be surprised if we get some of the old Square me costumes when the Airdrop comes out. So we'll find out when Airdrop comes out. We'll we should pay attention to what me costumes we get. That could be very telling right. to see if this theory is true. And if that's the case, the missing me costumes are from Capcom and from Bandai Namco. We are getting some Capcom games this year. There's a lot of Resident Evil games coming, right? We're getting right. Resident Evil 5 and 6, which is cool. Leon Kennedy. Yeah, cool. I, and I'm, and an interesting thing about that, right? So we get we got Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 1, Resident Evil 3. No, Resident Evil, not sorry, not, not 3. We got Resident Evil 0, 1, 4, 5, and 6 on Switch. Technically, we have 7 as well, but it's only like a cloud Japanese version. But technically, it's available on Switch. The two that are missing are 2 and 3. 3 is rumored to be getting a remake. We already got the... There's already a, a remake for 2. Mm -hmm. I'm hopeful that there's a Resident Evil 2 remake announcement in the future for Switch. And we've talked about it. We both agreed that there's a good chance it could happen, but probably not at this direct. Especially because we think they would be best showcased with a Switch Pro, which according to several reports is happening at some point so i would say that maybe later on maybe by the beginning of the next of the new year maybe the final character is a capcom character right and maybe that's when the switch pro comes out resident Evil 2 remake comes out and that's when they uh maybe show off leon s kennedy that's a consideration right maybe maybe um, maybe one of many possibilities of course and another one, I would love to see maybe Nightmare Siegfried from, from Bandai Namco, Soul Calibur. It would be great to see a Soul Calibur game. Those you are just my personal thing, wishes, but, you know, it could be those are just options. Something I realized, it might be a long time till we see the fourth yeah, DLC character be for Banjo coming on the fall. So it's probably going to be until after Banjo releases that we'll see the number four. We might not see the fourth announcement until Game Awards. Yeah, it might be at Game Awards. Maybe. So they might not even make the the deadline. Uh, I think they will. I think they could release. Uh, I if think, they, I if think, they I think, I think the fourth order, one comes out around de December. In December. Yeah. Comes out winter, and then the final one comes out like literally like February. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it fits. It fits. It fits with what I've been. Yeah. The timeline. No, you're, here right. That I'm you're right. You're right. It makes sense. Great. Absolutely. So. For sure. So let me see what's going on here. So that's why. I, sorry, just real quick. That's why I don't think that Leonis Kennedy and Resident Evil 2 will coincide because I think they'll announce the pro. If if they announce you know Resident Evil 2 at a Switch Pro event, I think they're gonna announce the pro way before they announce the fourth uh, DLC character, assuming the leaks for Switch Pro are real, because they say it's gonna come out this year. So there's no way they're going to wait till December to announce a new console coming out this year. Well, that was the that's what they heard, but because it wasn't publicly announced, they could push up the Switch Pro announcement, right? I that we I feel like it's I think Nintendo's made changes for the initial plan for this year, like Prime Prime Metro Prime 4 to be delayed. I think that's one of the reasons why I didn't see Prime Trilogy. Maybe they wanted Prime 4 to come out with a Switch Pro and that that's that plan's obviously been derailed, so we need to think of something different. I'm I wouldn't be surprised if, if the Switch Pro comes out like next year instead. But regardless, Dude, just... they launched it alongside Breath of the Wild. Imagine. Oh, I think it'll be out by then. Yeah, that'd be great. Imagine. Uh, but just going back, to assuming your point is the case, though, they have like an event for Switch to announce the Switch Mini Pro like sometime later this year, and that's when they announced Resident Evil 2 Remake to showcase it. That they can announce it then, but it doesn't have to come out then, right? And also, right. they they for example, they announced and they had a full blow for Dragon Quest XI S a, a while ago, right? But then they re-showed it off again here at E3, and then they showed off Air, um, Eric and the other heroes as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't have to be, like, literally at the same time, but they do want to use each other to sort of market each other, mm -hmm. right? So the release dates could be even a month or two apart, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I get you. I get you. So let me see here what's going on. Uh, Cynical said that didn't Sakurai say he didn't like putting already established fighting game characters in Smash? I haven't heard of this. If you find a link, by all means, I mean, share it. 
We we got Ryu and Ken. That that, 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 that kind of goes against that. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh, I, 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 this is an interesting point by Shadow of Nexus. Do you think that announcing Banjo was a mistake at E3? Because I feel like nothing can really live up to Banjo for me. He's pretty much a dream character. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going to have a hard time thinking of anything that can beat Banjo. Right. I, I don't think it was a mistake. I think, I think for, E3 was the they, time to do it. You know, for a long time, fans who grew up, you know, in the 90s... That's our dream character. You know, we grew up playing Dynasty 4, we grew up playing Rare, we grew up playing Banjo. There's a huge amount of people playing Smash now who are like, who's who's Banjo? I don't care about Banjo. What, 3D platformers? Who plays those anymore? I just want to play my, you know, all the modern games. Collectathons? Those are garbage. We hate that. That's actual trash. Like, I feel like there's... Obviously, the hardcore Nintendo community is super hyped about it, but I feel like there's a huge amount of people who aren't, and I think those are what the other DLC fighters will lean into. So I don't think it's like, you know, everyone who's looking to buy the fighters pass is like, yup, dream character already announced, don't need to see anybody else. So I don't think it was a mistake. No, I think it was the best time to show it off. Um, I hope... I, th there is no way to really top Banjo for me. Um... Unless Rex and Power is announced. Yeah, I was literally <laughs> gonna say the same thing. I was gonna say exact really same like thing. The only way. And I don't expect that for this fighter's pass. No, that's not happening. Doesn't happen. Uh I, I like what did Josh brought up Doug Bowser. He said Doug Bowser is a great Nintendo of America president. He does seem to have more energy. I liked what they did with Doug Bowser during the direct. I thought that was really cool. That was funny. I don't want to eat it. Yeah, it was funny, right? I loved how they introduced Bowser and like, no, that's the wrong Bowser. I thought that was cool. I thought he presented like, himself oh, really well. Good. Wait a minute. Not, not, not me. No, I'm not the president. What? Yeah, that oh. was a funny little skit. I think they did a great job. Mm -hmm. See, I was okay. saying this is the best Nintendo E3 Direct ever. I'm going to claim. It's up there. I think it's up there. I think recency bias is a thing, so it may seem right. like the best right now. But how will we feel about it moving forward? I don't know, but I do agree with you. It's definitely at least one of the best. Mm -hmm. um, I think. I th honestly like. If I here's the thing, I think in terms of pacing, they got it right because they there is no moment in the direct that I was like, oh my god, I can't stand this. Just hurry up already, right? Right? Like there was a couple games I, I felt a little indifferent towards, but they only dwelled on them for like 30, 60 seconds, mm -hmm. and it was just game after game after game after game after game. No, the, every, every single one, it was just a few minutes. And so they, they started strong with a Smash announcement, then they had another Smash announcement, which was just mind-blowing. And then they had another, one more thing, the end moment, and it was completely mind-blowing. So I think they did, it was an incredible Direct. So mm -hmm. in my opinion, right, this Direct, in terms of the games that were in there, I would say it's at least one of the best, maybe not for sure the best, but in terms of how it was paced and presented, it might be the best. Yeah, it, it might, might be. be. I think 2017 was also paced very well, but I feel like it was also sh much shorter. So this is a much bigger achievement to pace a 40 minute direct this well. They did like, a great job. Good. It really did. It's it's absolutely- Way it, it, better than 2018. 2018's pacing was absolute trash. Sometimes when you don't have the software, you don't have the software though, right? So you can't really yeah. just, you can only, if you like, it's not like when people when, when they have the team who puts the internal directs together, they're not like, okay, so this is what we're gonna allow you to show this time. Then they see it like, oh, so this is what we have to work with. <laughs> okay, um, you mm -hmm. know, sometimes they. I just think know. like 2018. I feel like 40 minutes was too much. They they should have just gone to like 30 minutes. Well, half of it was smash. Yeah, was and a, a lot of it was like things block. you don't need to show during the direct. It like got into like details that were unnecessary it was like it was cool was, i enjoyed it it, but it was more treehouse kind of stuff i was just upset that it was pretty much just like yeah this year's smash yeah that's basically what they said during the directs like this year is smash that's what we have smash felt like e3 2015 but not as good because it's not breath of the wild or 2016 mm -hmm. excuse me right 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 2015 sucked <laughs> 2015 was the worst ever brandon stan added me he said i would love to have phoenix right as the fourth 
Capcom rep in Smash, you would be such a unique fighter. Sakurai could take inspiration from Marvel vs. Capcom. Okay. Yeah, I think that fits in with the theory as well, so that that could be the case, maybe. Cynical is saying, I still think of Bethesda there's a rep and either a Resident Evil character or Astral Chain character. Ooh. I actually like the idea of an Astral Chain character. I don't think it'll happen because it's, it feel like every character that it's being added has, like... It's been around for a few years already. Mm -hmm. So, like, the, the newest character is Joker is so that... far. Yeah, I don't think Astro Chain has any hope of getting in. No, not this time. Maybe the next maybe the next uh, DLC uh, pack, if there is one. The Bethesda rep, I think, is in the cards, right? And I think I think there are, the rumors are for a Bethesda, a Doom guy, and Ryu Hayabusa. I think they, they each still have a chance. Mm -hmm. I think Steve's completely knows, like... His yeah, chances you're not, you're not getting gone. two Microsoft character reps, I don't think. No, I don't think so. Fine. Mastermind. My question is, since Hero is the official name in Smash, why Sakurai didn't pick Eredric Lodo? I, I think it fits best in my opinion. I wonder what his name is in Japanese. I don't know, but I love how there are multiple heroes. I love that. I think that was really cool. And it, it honestly, just seeing all the heroes like that, I think it seems like a real... It see, like, I could tell... The time of kind of moment there, like if you were a Dragon Quest fan and you played, you're a fan of the series, you played multiple games. That'd be that was probably a big goosebumps moment for you. And I that can would, see that. that would be freaking out moment. Yeah. yeah. Um. And you know, like it was a cool trailer, and I love and I love the Akira Toriyama designs. So I'm a big Dragon Ball fan, and the way they transitioned into Dragon, it I, it honestly somehow got me more hyped to play Dragon Quest 11 S. Like I think I'm gonna buy Dragon Quest 11 S now because of how they showed off. The Dragon Quest character. Now I'll say this though: if they didn't reveal Banjo today, I would have had a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth. I I, I would yeah. have, um, because then I would have gotten Joker, which is a character I didn't really care about before, and then yeah. I would have gotten the Dragon Quest character, another character I didn't really care about before. I'm a hardcore Nintendo fan, right? So, mm -hmm. but um, when I say I'm a hardcore Nintendo fan, I mean that I care about the the, the, the Nintendo game franchises, right? So there's nothing that's really appealing to me as a Nintendo fan after two or three DLC characters from the Fighters Pass that they promised us and got us to buy it before knowing any of the characters that we would really love it, I'd be a little upset. But, yeah. that's not the case, right? So it, I'm, yeah, I'm happy it, with things so far. If but, Vandu was announced, I'd be regretting my purchase of the Fighters Pass right now. I, I, I feel like they're doing a good job so far, but yeah, it would have been weird. And um, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. I, I, I wouldn't mind Doom Guy. I think Doom Guy would be pretty cool, actually. I would love Doom Guy. Be awesome. The Devil looks saying who will be the last two? I hope it's Shantae. Oh, Shantae. Hmm? I don't think Shantae's gonna win. Maybe not. Brand Stallion saying, Hey, Andres, I think we will get a second Microsoft rep in Smash Ultimate, but it won't be in this Fighters Pass. If we get a second Fighters Pass, we'll get another Microsoft rep, and it'll be right, yeah, Master I Chief. Oh. A second, my a second Fire's Pass changes like the whole narrative, like that's completely different. I mean, I think if we get a second Fire's Pass, we better get Rex and Pyra. Yeah, one hundred percent. We better get them. We'll see. All right, cool, cool. So a lot of you guys are bringing up different potential characters. Solid Fox saying Shantae and Leon, that'd be I'd I'd be pretty happy with that actually. I'd be really happy with that. Yeah, uh, but Cyndaquil, I do bring, I do think you bring up a good point. If Shovel Knight didn't get in. It's kind of hard imagining than Shantae getting in. Shantae is a spirit, so I don't want to like crush anyone's dreams, but I wouldn't say Shantae is super likely, but I do like Shantae as an option. I think that would be a really fun character. And if there, we do, a lot of us are talking about maybe there being a second Fighters Pass, you know, there's always a chance, I guess, right? Um, but, you know, Brandon, I know, I know that you didn't want to be up too late with this, so. I'm not saying we have to finish right now, but is there anything else you want, we, we think we should talk about before we, we call it a night? And guys, if there's anything, any sort of question or things you want us to talk about or bring up, by all means. We have not talked about Astro Chain, and that is not okay. I have not seen the, the Treehouse footage for it yet, but I'll tell you this. Right. I like those chimeras. I like how there's platforming, and I love how beautiful the game looks like the giant bosses. This game looks <laughs> dope. I, I mentioned it during my stream, my reaction, but... I might like this game more than Bayonetta 3. The aesthetic to me and the theme seem to be more... They're hitting me harder. You need to see the Treehouse footage. It's so good. 
I'm gonna it, watch it soon. So much I'm gonna watch it soon. Like, there's just yeah. been so much to cover and talk about. I have like, like yeah. we talked about earlier. There's like so many videos I want to do. Like just it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But the game is it's just straight up gonna be amazing, guys. It's just straight up gonna be awesome. We're, we're I... looking at a, an interesting time period because I believe Astro Chain comes out August 30th. Um, Link's Awakening comes out in September. There's another game that comes out in September as well. What's it? What is it? A Dragon Quest. I think is it Dragon Quest 11s that comes out in September as as well. Um, I think I know there's like three. There's two Nintendo published games that at least two that come out in September. One of them is Link's Awakening. Let me see. Dragon Quest. If, if any of you guys in the chat know, by all means, let me know. Switch release date. Yes, I hate it. Release date. What is it? Oh, J July. It's actually July. So what is coming out in September? Damon X Machina? What is, when's Damon X Machina? Still no release date for that? Did he get a release date? I think Still... he did. I think it's was it September? September 13th. Okay, so that's the game. So September 13th for Damon X Machina, and then Link's Awakening is like the next week, I think. Yeah. It's not saying on here, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's September. Yeah, September 20th. Yeah, people in the chat are confirming. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, did we get a recently release date for Luigi's Mansion 3? No. No release. That date. is actually something I wanted to talk about. Like, why? Why no release? It's just 2019. I mean, they said 2019 at E3 2019, so I don't think yeah. it's not getting. Oh, there, there's no way it's not hitting. 20. I think what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a September Nintendo Direct, and it's gonna get a big focus there. We're gonna learn. It's gonna have like another deep dive. Mm -hmm. And then we'll get a date for it. I'm just confused because we got an exact day for Animal Crossing, which got delayed. And we didn't get it. Yeah, I get what you're saying. I think I think they gave a date because they wanted people to know that it is happening. Right. Right. They gave a specific date because people have been so worried about it, mm -hmm. and it is getting delayed. But they want people to know that hey, it's not going to get delayed that long. Like if they just said 2020, people would be freaking out. Right? Yeah. They said early 2020. Mean, 20, they said early 2020. Like, they gave March a specific date. March 20th, 2020. Like right. it was like the, the very end of the fiscal thing. year. Right. The very end of the fiscal year. I just I think part of that is because they knew how much fans wanted a specific date. I think with yeah. Luigi's Mansion 3, they're probably still trying to. I don't know if they're. If they're, if they're there must be some. I don't know if they knew the date. There. I don't think there's any. It's like the only game we didn't get a date for. I there think, must be some kind of like internal discussion still going on about when they run to release it or well, something. Do you think there's any way they can announce something that comes out? You know, I'll. I told myself I wouldn't say anything about this. I, I said it. I'm not, not like I'm hiding anything, but I literally said to get earlier in this discussion that I would not make any more predictions for Prime Trilogy. <laughs> I would not. And I'm not, I'm not going to make, I'm not predicting it, but I'm going to say that I think it's possible that a Wii U, or a couple, or a Wii U remaster, or, a, or some sort of remastered port, maybe one or two, could still be announced at a later Direct and come out this year. Right, like, for example, they could ha hypothetically have a Nintendo Direct in August or early September, and they could maybe show off Pikmin 3 then, right, it could come out like a month or, a month or two afterwards. And maybe, you know, that's made one of the reasons why. Because there still could be a couple games that Nintendo wants to announce, and they're not sure about the timing of that. And depending on the timing of that, that could affect when Luigi's Mansion comes out. They're also probably still developing Luigi's Mansion, so there may be a window where they're not sure where it's going to hit. Right. Yeah, I. the only reason I could think that they wouldn't is just they're not exactly sure when they are. It's when it's going to be ready. It's just interesting that it's this close, and they're not exactly sure. Or I, maybe they just wanted to save the announcement just because they can. Yeah, I, maybe, maybe that's what it is. Um, I'm kind of just, like, annoyed because I want to know what it is. Do we have a, a release date for Panzer Dragoon? I don't know. But Luigi's Mansion was one of the games I wanted to know the least. That was like, I really want to know when this game's coming out. And they were just like, nah, I'm not going to tell you. And they're like, oh, thanks. So glad. It says a winter 2019, so Panzer Dragoon might be a December game. It's a November or December game, basically. At um, this point, I'm like that's a, a Switch exclusive, by the way. Right, I'm like, is Luigi's Mansion 3 gonna end up being a December game? I hope not. I don't think so. 
I hope it'd be in October. It might be, but I don't think so. There's another November. Oh, town was not mentioned to it, by the way. I was right about that. Not I got that right. Only. I said town might not come. Well, actually, I said town. I said I, I bet the town would probably come, but I said there was a fair chance that it might not. Um, mm. and it's not. So oh, that's something else to consider, right? So there's still there's still a lot of stuff to talk. Like there's still things they can show off for this year. More Smash characters, maybe another Wii U port or two. Right, like there's things that can still be said. Getting that release date for Luigi's Mansion. There are things. <laughs> um, you know, something I'm curious about is when when do we think we'll see Breath of the Wild sequel again? Game Awards. I was thinking maybe Game Awards as well. Game Awards, Game or... Awards, or Smash, or like a March like tease. Like, mm -hmm. it's only going to be mentioned one more time before... The, it's going to be mentioned at least one more time before E3, I think. Right. Um, maybe. They could wait all the way until E3, actually. They could wait. I don't think they will. I don't think they'll wait a whole year. Right. I don't think so. I think that we'll get more mentions. Either it can be the Game Awards, or kind of like Smash in the middle of March, and then, like, now Blowout at E3 comes out holiday 2020. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's what I think. I think they might have. I, I'm thinking they'll have another teaser trailer at the Game Awards as well. I don't think it's made anything huge. I think it'll be about the same size and scope as the one we got. Oh, it might might be gameplay. They might show gameplay. I don't know if they want to show gameplay yet, because I don't know. I, you know what? I, I think, think we, we, need, we need a we'll title. We need a the... title first. We need a trailer with a title, because Breath yeah. of the Wild sequel is not its name. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna be called Breath. I doubt it'll be called Breath of the Wild too. It... I don't think we'll get a title at Game Awards either. I think we'll just get another teaser trailer, to be honest. Okay. Cynical thinks that we might just get another Smash character. We could get a Smash character and a Breath of the Wild trailer. It could be more than one thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So let's talk a little bit more about Zelda before we call it a night. And guys, if there's anything else you want us to bring up in the chat, by all means, put it in there. We'll try to address it try to close this discussion down um so there's a bit of debate about what's what's going on in that trailer right so mm -hmm. i brand you and i were talking about it a little bit but now we can talk about a person instead of text mm -hmm. i i think a lot of us think that that's probably ganondorf in that trailer mm -hmm. but the thing is i don't think a lot of people realize what that means because the thing is Minus one reincarnation of Ganondorf in like one of the Four Swords games, there's only one Ganondorf in Zelda. Right. There's not like multiple uh, Ganondorfs that reincarnate. Minus one, um, and that Ganondorf appears in Ocarina of Time. He appears in Twilight Princess and the Wind Waker. Now keep in mind, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker are two different timelines, right? But it's still right. the same Ganondorf, just different continuities. Then, so that Ganondorf lives for generations beyond in both timelines. He's alive to see different Link reincarnations of Link and Zelda. And he's obviously somehow still in his prime, right? Uh, this dude has died and been stabbed in the head and the heart multiple times and keeps coming back. He has more <laughs> vitality more more vitality than everyone else. He might even be immortal, right? Because he right. got stabbed in the head at the end of Ocarina of Time. Oh, spoilers from 1998. He got stabbed in the head uh, when he became the Demon King Ganon. And that didn't kill him, right? He right. got stabbed in the heart by the sages, and that didn't kill him, right? And then he got stabbed in the heart again by Link at the end of Twilight Princess, and we thought that killed him, right? Mm -hmm. And also in The Wind Waker, he got stabbed in the head and turned to stone, and then was crushed by leagues and leagues of right. water. Along with literally the rest of Hyrule. Yeah, gone. flooded out in history. Now, we don't know... The, the th this gets a little bit of timeline theory because mm -hmm. we don't know exactly where Breath of the Wild is. What we know is that Breath of the Wild happens really late into the timeline. The current speculation... Well, there's of course, everyone has different opinions. But I think what could be happening with Breath of the Wild that it's kind of like a convergence. Right? Where... It's not so much that the timelines are sort of... It, it's kind of more like the timelines end up in a similar situation regardless, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like, the further down the time, each timeline you go, they sort of kind of reconnect with each other naturally anyway, if that makes sense. So, 
it's kind of so i basically i guess if you go down each timeline eventually the events of breath of the wild will take place so that kind of makes sense to me but i think if you if you look at breath of the wild if you watch like the one of the beginning 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 legends it talks about calamity ganon i think impa explains that calamity ganon i have to double check i still have to do research on this there will be a more detailed video on all of this but impa talks about how calamity ganon is something that became that became what it is after many many eras of Gandorf failing right or Ganon right. failing right either it was from Impa in, in a cutscene or it's from an interview from Anuma uh, so there's something with that this constant failure and we thought that it was just kind of like the spirit of demise right materializing as Calamity Ganon coming from underground randomly but now we're seeing in the trailer that link and zelda are exploring underground in the ruins of hyrule which seems to be literally under hyrule castle yeah and we're seeing the calamity again in aura all around right we're seeing that that calamity again in aura that purplish smoke that consumes everything so that seems it does seem to be related and it looks like literally this corpse is under hyrule castle where calamity again came out of <laughs> right so it kind of all connects here so it seems like this corpse is the source for calamity again and, and there's like smoke coming right. out of its chest and what and we saw we saw the jewel you pointed out to me earlier brandon right that there was a jewel right. which is the same kind of jewel that get every gandorf has had right but not every Gandorf. the same gandorf has always had a yellow jewel in his head right. right so there you go the yellow jewel in his head and he also has something on his heart or his torso area the same place yeah. that he was stabbed in twilight princess he had a huge scar that stayed there so, it's definitely a Gerudo person because there's Gerudo, the mark, like the symbol for Gerudo is like all over them. I want to. They're wearing what you Gerudo. Saw? They have Gerudo on their armbands. They have a circle and it has the Gerudo symbol in the middle. And Let's... they specifically show a close up of the Gerudo symbol on his clothing. Like there was a specific pan just to show that in the trailer. Let me see if I can pull up a frame. Hold on. It might give me. It's gonna take me a second. Uh, right. Breath of the Wild. Right now, that that is that is me. Let me see here. I'm literally this is me editing on the fly, so the world can see. Can you see? Can you see what I'm doing exactly? I don't know. I have to go to the. Here we are. Uh, right. Yeah, I can see what you're doing. Let me know when the box is like. I want to make it so that the, the the actual video box is very easy to see on the stream. It seems pretty big. Yeah. There you go. That's that's good. There's a whole thing there. Kinda. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Alright. So, I'm just gonna, like... We're looking at him right now, right? So, mm -hmm. I have to, like... Okay, I see the, the robes. And you see this is the the, the, the chest there. That is that is that is Gerudo. That's a Gerudo symbol. That right there, yes. That is exactly the sure. hand I was talking about. That is, ex that is the Gerudo symbol. And he has chains on him. I think Gandorf originally had chains in Twilight Princess as well, around him as well. In fact, let's look at Gandorf from Twilight Princess just to double check that, right? Gandorf, Twilight Princess. Um, maybe not, actually. I'm looking at an image here. I don't see it, but maybe. Mm -hmm. But this is when he's free. How about when he was fine? Chained. If I if I the chain, maybe I'll see it. Okay, so he was chained at some point, but that doesn't necessarily. This could be just different chains. Right. Um. But that symbol does look like the Gerudo symbol. I'm pretty sure. I don't think those are chains. I think they're like decorative. Maybe. Circles, because so they don't much connect. Stuff happening here. Dude, this is so much. But you see, this is like the purple aura. Right, By right, the way, right. this this right here. It looks like a dungeon. So, right. we might be getting traditional dungeons in this next Zelda. And I, maybe the way we find them in is that the, most of them are underground, right? That makes right. sense because a lot of there's a lot of things going on underground with ancient Hyrule. All of the temples and dungeons are from ancient Hyrule. So, maybe when the because we'd see the castle rising up, right? Oh, but let me let's this. This is a shot that everyone's kind of looking at. That right there reminds me of Demise. That silhouette. I... Yeah, I mean, I Demise is just the original Ganondorf. Like, he's the original Demon King. They have a similar form. Right. 
Um, it could be just be Gandorf looking boss, but it he has the long hair, the claw like hands. Mm -hmm. But it's not fire hair. No, it's not fire it's, hair. Right? It's more like just Gan. It's more like it, maybe just it's just Gandorf. Ganon's hair when it's not all tied up. He's got long he has nails. long hair. Ganon has, especially in Twilight Princess, he has really long hair. It's just all tied right. up in like a decorative piece. Yeah. So if he was let loose, it probably, that's probably what it looked like. This definitely is Gerudo stuff. So I think this yeah. is... This is a an, an ancient Gerudo that is the source for the Calamity Ganon. Is it the same Ganondorf that we see in Ocarina of Time, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker? I think it's more interesting if it is. It would, I think it'd be kind of boring if it's just like another reincarnation. But it doesn't really matter. Um, but I want to point out that the, I think it makes sense to me that it would be the same Ganondorf because the thing is, as you can see, this dude just doesn't die. <laughs> right? He just <laughs> doesn't die. He's been here for generations. They have the, there, there is literally a legend of the Calamity Ganon written in scripture on rocks that, of this repeated thing that happens every hundred years or so or something like that where the Calamity Ganon comes and attacks. And the <laughs> source of that evil that keeps coming every few, every genera few generations is... This dead dude, or not so dead dude, under Hyrule right. Castle, right? How long has he been here? Um, I think he's been chained here for a really, really long time, and he's obviously Ganondorf. But is he the same Ganondorf from those? He's been here for a really long time, and the Ganondorf from Twilight from the Ganondorf just d d couldn't die. He was killed, stabbed in the head multiple times in the heart, and he still wouldn't die. So maybe because he has a Triforce of Power. He's kind of cursed to just kind of never die, right? Or being extremely hard to kill, at least, right? Mm -hmm. So he might be immortal, and, and that is, could explain why he's still alive here. Yeah, he doesn't even have to look exactly the same. He, he can look completely different and still be the Ganon from... Right, the Wind Waker Ganondorf, Twilight Princess Ganondorf, and Ocarina of Time Ganondorf all look completely different, but it is 100% right. confirmed that they are all the same person. Yeah, exact same person. It's just right. the art not style a reincarnation. The literally the same person. person. Yeah, yeah. It's just a different interpretation of how that person would look in the different art styles. Right. And so, since Breath of the Wild is a very different art style from those games, it makes sense we get another, you know, different look to Ganon. But he has the yellow gem, right? He has the Gerudo mm -hmm. stuff. He has the long reddish hair, mm -hmm. uh, and he seems to be immortal because. And I would I would blame that on the Triforce of Power. This dude doesn't know how to die, so this could be the return of Ganondorf, the same Ganondorf. That's 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 the real thing I want to say here. He's the same, not a reincarnation. I think he's the same right. Ganondorf. Um, I have to do more research on it to make sure, but I, I I get the feeling that he is. Mm -hmm. So I really hope that he somehow is more personalized since he's in his hopefully in his Gandorf form. I'm hoping he's not just like, oh, I look like Gandorf, but I'm still just a dumb, mindless, essentially malice form. Arg, I, I'm a zombie now. Yay. I hope he's like, actually like, still kind of acts like Ganon in a way, at least. Well, it looks like this is going to be a, a more story focused, which I really, I really hope yeah. for. So it looks like I mean, this game might have dungeons. It looks like this game might be more story focused. The things we wanted, the, the things that we right. had faults with the rest of the wide were just basically those two things. It looks like they're addressing with this game. Literally, Maybe. just the fact that the story will unfold as you play the game instead of the story being something that happened like way before the game even starts is gonna make the story a million times better than Breath of the Wild. Because if you had actually played like a, through a hundred years ago that story, that would have been like the most epic. Zelda story ever but since you're just like oh here's like a short couple cutscenes to sum up the entirety of the story okay bye that's that's what made it bad so now this story is going to unfold as you're playing so at the very least well, you're that, not that's what know we're what assuming. everything is in the first five hours of the game right that's what I'm hoping and I kind of agree with you but I just want to make it clear we're, we're making these assumptions right based on what we're seeing you know <laughs> I mean keep in mind that when we saw but just to say it one more time, I do agree with you, Brandon, but I'm just playing devil's advocate devil's advocate here because remember when we saw the initial Zelda trailer, it seemed like Breath of the Wild had the best Zelda story ever. And right. there's good story in there, but it's segmented and not told in the best way. 
<laughs> so there's still that possibility with this, but it do also get the impression that this is more story focused. Right. I think that that was one of the things a lot of fans were really complaining about. So I feel like they probably took that into account with this one and uh, changed the way they told the story. I mean, right. that's what I'm hoping. Obviously, that's a complete assumption, but I feel like right. Nintendo is doing a really good job lately of listening to fan criticism in pretty much all their games. So, Yeah. So we have some interesting questions about, about this, actually, in the chat. I think we should get to them, because this is some really right. good questions. Good, um, good. Oh, man, we've, they've been talking about Ganondorf for a while. Um, Shadow of Nexus, the, the Legend of Zelda Resurrection of Ganon. That would be a fun name. Uh, Gisabas is saying Return of Ganondorf. This one, man, I'm going to hope we see something from Metro Prime 4 at next year's E3. I hope so, but I'm not going to count on it because yeah. I've been disappointed way too many times. Yeah, Ganondorf is only in four Zelda games. That is a good point, Shadow of Nexus. Then that, that's, and then it goes back to the point I'm making that the Ganondorf that we that's so famous has only been in Ocarina of Time, Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess, and there's a reincarnation of him in one of the Four Swords games, I think. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you could see, you could you could consider Demise the beginning. He Demise is the beginning of, of Ganon and Ganondorf. He curses Link and Zelda to at the end, and basically he's like this reincarnating hatred that may not always reincarnate as. Um, you know, Ganondorf. There are other enemies and, and antagonists right. in the game. So, but I would say that this is Ganondorf, and I hope so. It would be the coolest thing to see, at least. Deluxe and God, I hope it's not Ganon. He's dead, dead, like Aku and Samurai Jack. No way in hell he's coming back unless he's a god. Well, he looked kind of like a death god in this Chinese game. Kind of is a god. Yeah, I mean, the reason is a triforce of power. Right. Yeah. Exactly. He literally has a god bend to his will. The power he, of a god on his hand. <laughs> he doesn't die. We, if you look, if you look, look at Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Ocarina of Time. The dude doesn't die. You stab him in the head, stab him in the heart, have him live for generations. He just <clears throat> doesn't freaking die. I mean, he is literally harnessing the power of one of the three gods that created the universe of Hyrule. Right. So. And I, I want to point out though that he is not just Gandorf. He is he becomes the Demon King. Ganon at the end of Ocarina of Time. So he's more than just... So there's Gandorf, and then the Triforce of Power enables him to become the Demon King Gandorf. I mean, Demon King Ganon. A lot of people get that confused. They, they use Ganon and Gandorf interchangeably, but Ganondorf right. becomes the Demon King Ganon at the end of Ocarina of Time. So you could call him, in his humanoid form, Ganondorf, and then his beast form, Ganon, but my point simply being that he became the Demon King at the end of Ocarina of Time. And that that's he kind of right. He basically is the true reincarnation of demise once he becomes the demon king. Um, right. So let me just continue with the chat here because there's some interesting questions though. <laughs> Doom will play saying maybe st try stabbing the foot. Maybe that'll kill him. His Achilles heel. The heart really? clearly does not work. Great point. <laughs> Darcy, do you think Gandorf was? Let me let me put this away so everyone can see our faces. But I may bring this back. We want to analyze another couple other shots. Um, so. Darcy, do you think Ganondorf was down there the whole time during Breath of the Wild, or after beating Clamity again, his essence or whatever surfaced itself as that corpse? I think I, that corpse has been the there, time. yeah, for thousands of years. That was the, the source. The dude doesn't die. Yeah. Yeah. That. That exactly. He is a that, source. I think that's the narrative that they're. It seems pretty clear to me that that's what the narrative they're kind of trying to lead you to. And we talked about that when we were theorizing about the DLC, we thought maybe they could explore the story right. of them exploring the, the ruins and underground of Hyrule to find their true root of the evil. Because they know you you may be led to believe at the end of Breath of the Wild that you destroy the root of the evil, but it's coming from underground. So mm -hmm. they go that, down there to find the root of the evil. And that root of the evil is that corpse of Gandorf that is still not really a corpse. It just looks like a corpse. It's alive. The Triforce right. of Power, I'm betting, is the reason why it's still alive. Uh, so that would be interesting. Maybe they'll explain why uh, Link doesn't have the Triforce. You know? Yeah. Maybe they will. He does have that weird blue thing happen to his hand, actually. We can put that up. There's yeah, a... yeah. I th honest, I think that has to do with the same power that's holding on to Ganon. In, or supposedly Ganon in that shot because that green stuff that green swirling yeah, that's what like that, that's yeah. the same that's the same stuff that happens when like a uh, those monks in the shrines they dissipate that's that same green 
It's she also power. holding Ganon. Yeah, right, there is literally a hand that's been holding him back. But this is it's the same hand. The right. same hand that's holding back Gandorf is also this hand here, right? And it does have like that Sheikah stuff around it too. So like there, but there's there's him getting this weird power on his hand. It's like consuming his hand, right? But then you see here the hand was coming from. It's it's literally by the chest. It's holding the part where Gandorf has been stabbed right. in the chest. I think this might this might even be the Gandorf from the Twilight Princess. Maybe. Yeah, that's or just at least well, alluding yeah. to it. The same a similar story. Just if you go if you, if you believe in my theory that basically all the every timeline basically has a similar event. Gandorf is eventually just gonna get stabbed in the heart, you know, and he's gonna have that scar, and he's gonna be a Gerudo. But. Yeah. Yeah, we see that. We see, you know, the, the hand. We see that. Look at that. Um, man, this looks so cool. Yeah. And he, he gets the power. This is a cool shot, right? Here. This is a beautiful shot, right there, man. That's a. You guys will see it in a moment. I, I'm ahead of you, so you'll see it in a moment. But. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's a beautiful shot. Well, let's continue down the chat. What if the moon returns in Breath of the Wild 2? That'd be hilarious <laughs> and crazy to see. Is a domain. Absolutely. Shadow of Nexus. I think this game is going to be like Bioshock Infinite, where you actually have Zelda by your side your entire time, so she can help you battle and give you items. I hope that's the case, yeah. but we do see something weird happen with Zelda. Uh, you, well, first, we see this. We see them try to grab each other's hands, right? Um, well, let me play it. Uh, so this is how it's happening. Okay, so they're actually they're it's not do you, if I'm going okay I'm going forward now. This is actually happening. They're reaching for each other's hands. Looks like they actually do grab each other's hands, right? But there's another hand thing here, so there might be a motif of hands we got going on. But look at this, you saw that right? Mm -hmm. There she's there there, everything's collapsing. You might get separated from Zelda, but I do hope that Zelda is a, a mechanic of, of this game, like. She somehow interacts with Link throughout the adventure. That would be really cool to see. That's what I would love. I would love that. I highly doubt that they are going to be like, you just rescued Zelda. Okay, five seconds later, yep, captured again, rescue her again. Okay. Yeah. Also, we made such a big emphasis on the fact that you're now traveling with her, but nope, that's not going to be a part of the game. I don't know, man. It could just be the beginning story. I don't know. I feel like the the they specifically show like a bunch of... Like, I feel like they put a big emphasis on the fact that you are exploring together and yeah, they even have a scene where you're kind of like re like making camp on the edge of the water and everyone like gathering like with the big uh, bowl thing that you're traveling on. You got this big pack animal. It seems like they were definitely on an adventure together. And I feel like that's going to be a thing. I feel like the... It's a, I, I feel that that's a reason they showed this in particular is because I think that's a hint at that mechanic, but I could be wrong. Maybe. Uh, I hope I hope you're right. I hope it is a hint at that mechanic. I would love to see them interact with each other throughout the game. Mm -hmm. Let's continue with the chat, though. I'm going to put this away for now. Um, for whatever reason, since the video, output low is, uh, the video output is low on the stream, I hope everything looks okay. YouTube says that to me like all the time and it means absolutely nothing. So. Okay. All right. As long as everything looks good. Yeah, I'm literally watching it. It's, it's perfect. So. So Duo Plays is asking, do you think they give us the same map from Breath of the Wild? Well, okay. I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put this up one more time. One more time. One more time. Look at this. Um, you'll see as we go go through the trailer. It's a little further up. Right there. Look. You see what happens? The Hyrule Castle is coming out of the ground. I think, and it's shaking the entire. High rule. So I would. By the way, this is a great plateau right here. Th this whole, this whole like round area at the above. This is literally the great plateau. I think <coughs> there's gonna be a lot of. I think we are gonna play in Breath of the Wild, but I feel like there's gonna be a lot of terrain changes. Like there's gonna be some literal seismic shifts with the terrain. So the terrain is gonna change up drastically. There will probably be some towns already building up because they are restoring High Rule. So there'll be a lot more towns to yeah. explore. They'll probably, maybe even they'll expand the map a little bit, right? And throw, put more in there. So I think it'll make it denser. There'll be seismic shifts to change around the, the actual, like, the, what, the, the topography of the map. I think, is that the right word? 
So it's going to look different because of the seismic shifts, because of the thing happening with the Gan Calamity Ganon here. I think there's going to be towns being built up. Like a lot where, where there are ruined towns, there will actually be actually being towns built up because it's all about destroying Hyrule at, at the end of Breath of the Wild. And I think we'll just, they'll, they'll probably just put more in there. They'll probably just right. shove more content in there and maybe they'll I, even go beyond the normal boundaries I also have a theory. I'm going to make a whole video on it in more detail, but I have kind of have a theory that finding underground locations I agree might with you. be a thing in this I game. Like, it might be a big strong point. Finding the temples too. They might mm -hmm. it might be about finding the temples underground in different areas. Because I think it's been right. so long, right? That all these ancient temples, like a forest and water temple, they should still exist in Hyrule. We didn't find them at all in Breath of the Wild. There's so many things in Breath of the Wild that there are, right? Like you see the names of them, like so many ancient things. We didn't find any temples. Like there's a forgotten right. temple, but that's like that's like it. Right, and there's the shrines. Um, is the Forgotten Temple the one in that giant like the one with the with the press the goddess statue, the giant goddess statue, the, with all the with all the guardians? Yeah, yeah, that's one temple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one temple. There are supposed to be like a dozen temples, right? If you look across the various Zelda games, you have the fire, water, earth, spirit, and shadow, and forest and light. But then there's also the wind and earth temples as well as well from Wind Waker. Mm -hmm. And if you pay attention to the Wind Waker mythology a lot of the temples were built on the tops of mountains and what's breath of the wild mountains but maybe some are underground i don't there's so many different things different angles here but there's a lot right so i think there's gonna there's gonna be something to that brand i agree with you so between just uh, like exploring the underground finding temples the seismic mm -hmm. shifts build built up towns more people coming in moving in back into hyrule maybe expanding beyond the reaches of the map and just, just literally just throwing in more content into it making a denser game i think the world's going to feel and look very different there's going to be a lot more to explore so i'm not worried about it being the yeah. same map at all i think they're going to make it feel very different actually right yeah i like what cynical said i think the map will be heavily expanded upon the based on the old map that that's that's something i pretty much agree, I, I agree with that Devaluki says no i want a new land kingdom New Land Kingdoms, otherwise the game will feel the same too much like COD, same game off, off for different name and story. I, I think they're going to do a lot to make it feel different. Yeah. I want to spend more time in, in, in the world of, of Hyrule, Duma plays. I think, and I think it will allow them to make the game a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. But you know, there's a way to make it feel and look different without, you know, complete, going to a completely different place. Right. I feel like I do my plays. I feel like they they may finally make Zelda playable in some form, even if she is just controlling the slate. Do my plays and her magic takes over the mechanics from the dun champ from the champions. That would be interesting to see. That'd be one way to do it because she is more of the smarter magical kind of person. Maybe that could be the case. I do want to point out though that I don't think she's going to be as OP as she was at the end of the Breath of the Wild. That, that she does make right. a point to say that she, that she doesn't seem to have as much powers as she did. Right, but she said she's kind of okay with that. So, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I don't think she's gonna be as overpowered. She might not have any magical power left, actually. Actually, we'll see. But she's definitely not gonna be as strong, at least for most of the game, as she was when she completely wiped out that calamity again. Right. Yeah. I think. I don't know. Will she still have the? Cause she has. Doesn't she have a Triforce in the end of uh, Breath of the Wild? She has uh, a piece of the Triforce. Um, I don't know, dude. I don't think she did. I mean, she has a Triforce. When, she has a Triforce when she when she attacks Calamity Ganon. But I'm saying yeah, I'm she saying. makes a point that she doesn't have those powers anymore, and the ending cutscene of the game. Mm, I wonder if she just doesn't know how to use them. Maybe I feel like she comes out in specific instances when she like really needs it. Maybe that could be the case. Because she had no idea she even had it before, so it would make sense, like. Just because she used it once doesn't mean she knows right. how to use it. Actually, I like what Doom Plays says here. He says, making that separation may even make things interesting when they get separated and you need to play us as each character separately. So maybe them separating when we see that in that trailer isn't necessarily of showing that you'll have to go save Zelda again. Maybe you play as both of them. That'd be awesome. Yeah, it'd be really cool. That'd be really cool to see. I'd love that, especially because people want to play. There's all this outcry for being able to play as a female link which i hope never happens because link is, is a boy right like the, the lore of zelda is link link is, a, is the male right but zelda is a badass princess right like if you want to have a female character in zelda the game's called zelda so play as zelda 
right? Um, I think that's totally an option. I would love to see that. I think it'd be really cool. Well, I think we've, um, we've covered a lot, right? And keep in mind, there will be the podcast on Monday. We each have a right. lot of videos coming. So, oh, yeah. Oh, crap. Brandon, I, don't, I, didn't, I did not put uh, the link to your channel in the description. <sighs> what did you do? Oh, I'm so sorry. I have been betrayed. Nope. Oh, uh, uh, the stream's not over yet, though. I can add it now. There you go. <laughs> Good do it. I have that power. So, Brandon, do some plugs while I, while I get this link for you. Well, guys, of course, I have all my predictions on my channel. I made a separate easy to watch predictions for Breath of the Wild sequel, Animal Crossing, and Banjo. I also am reacting to the Treehouse. And tomorrow, I'll be back again, 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, to do more Treehouse footage. And Thursday should be the same time. So I'll be live streaming both of those. And I'm going to have a bunch of videos coming out um, after that. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get videos out on the days I'm live streaming uh, the Treehouse or not, but definitely after that's over, we'll get a bunch of videos out about uh, not only my thoughts on E3, but also projections for the future, especially for Breath of the Wild sequel. You're going to see a ton of that. So. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. I uh, We've got so much to talk about. Um, but, guys, do make sure to check out Brandon's channel. The link should now be in the description below. And if for whatever reason you don't want to click the link or you didn't check it out, it's What About Nintendo. So, there you go. What About Nintendo. One word. You should find it. And uh, for me, you're already here. Leaving a like would be greatly appreciated. Stay tuned because there will be... There's a lot of videos planned. I don't know how I'm going to be able to get to all of them. There's a lot planned. I have stuff planned for Banjo and Smash. I have stuff planned for the Breath of the Wild sequel. In fact, that's probably going to be a big focus for the channel moving forward the void of metroid will be filled by zelda don't worry um, in fact <laughs> before the metroid hype started rising up i was talking about Zelda before and so it's kind of like a cycle um and uh there's definitely some pokemon stuff too because don't it's, we didn't really mention much much pokemon sword and shield today but that will that's all something we'll be talking about so stay tuned guys anyways everyone have a good night hope you enjoyed this incredible nintendo holiday and we will see you guys really soon. Bye.